Okay, so this is a demonstration on a pristine Windows 10 computer with nothing but Windows patches, newest drivers, and of course Steam installed. All of the various issues you run into uh, trying to install LotRo with Steam. Uh, I, I made this video pretty quickly uh, just to uh, allay some uh, concerns, claims, uh, that oh, Steam is much easier. Uh, actually, I ran into a lot more trouble, especially if you don't go through some of the um, preparatory, preparatory, is that a word? Steps that I outline in my prior video for the standalone installer. Um, well, as you can see here, we've gone into Steam and we're just saying play now, which starts the download. Now we're, we're zooming forward in time here until it finishes its initial download. And now, we're left with the choice of a little blank icon over there or the play button over there. Uh, already, there it's kind of the average player is going to want an actual icon for their lot row icon, but whatever. We elected to go with the play button in the center. And this is expected if you don't pre install it, like my prior video recommended, uh, that you're going to need to install the .NET framework. So we're going to go ahead and tell it to install. And this doesn't tend to take too long. Obviously, we jumped ahead about 20 minutes there, uh, maybe more, to download the 20 gigabytes of game files. Uh, but as you'll see here, it's going to finish downloading these .NET uh, framework files. And then, well, I'll just, I'll spoil the fun. Nothing else happens. Uh, it, and no matter what you double click, uh, as we'll see, you can double click the icon. Well, go ahead, click close. I'm doing a voiceover here because uh, I edited up the video so much that the initial narration would be no good. So, as you can see here, we're going to click play. Nothing else happens. So the installer got to the point of the .NET install and then it just silently poops out on us. Um, the average player uh, would uh, probably give up here and say, wow, so this game just doesn't work. Um, the more savvy customer would try, possibly try to fix it themselves if they're really motivated to play. Uh, so that's what we attempt to do here. But first, like a good little troubleshooter, we are going to restart the computer. So you'll see here, after a bit of hemming and hawing, uh, we'll see the little green NVIDIA is recording thingy up in the upper right. All right, so the computer's restarted. Just to make sure that has no effect, which I wouldn't expect it to, but, you know, that's step number one in troubleshooting any problem. So we double-click this icon again. Nothing happens. Dead in the water. So we launch Steam. We go to the library. We scroll down to the game, and we try the other thing, the play button. Running. And then back to nothing. So still dead in the water. I can't stress this enough, and this is really out of concern for SSG and the success of the game. Um, how, many, how many players are going to go on from here? So this is how you fix it if you want to try. Uh, if you're, you know, uh, not afraid of your computer. So you go into your C drive. You go into, now normally this would be Standing Stone Games or um, Turbine. But because we installed it on Steam, it's in the Steam folder. We go into Steam Apps. Then into Common. Lord of the Rings Online. And from prior knowledge of playing this game for 10 years, the Turbine Invoker used to be the file we want to run, and as you can see, we double click that, and what happens? It mentions msvcp100.dll, and again, just being kind of a geek, that rings a bell about uh, Microsoft Visual Studio, Microsoft Visual C++ runtimes, and knowing LotRo as well as a lot of us do after 10 years, you know that those are some prerequisite software 
uh, that's prerequisite software for LotRo to run, which apparently did not happen right around the time the .NET framework was installed. So it becomes apparent at this point that the Steam installer totally fails to install uh, the the um, uh, Visual C++ uh, runtime prerequisites. So uh, we've got to go and install them ourselves, even to just get the patcher running. Uh, I can't stress this enough. The, you know, say what you will about the standalone uh, SSG provided non-Steam lot row installer. It at least gets this part right. And you know, at no point in that one is there a show-stopping bug. The worst that happens with the standalone SSG provided lot row installer is that you might end up with no DX10 and DX11 graphics available. You might be stuck on DX9 until you install the DX, uh, the DirectX runtimes. Uh, and, you know, there's a few things I could quibble with with that uh, standalone installer. I, I think it should warn you that the .NET framework is going to uh, be called for. It's one of the reasons I, I pre-install it, or in the video I recorded prior, urge people to pre-install both the .NET and the uh, um, DirectX runtimes. So anyways, here we are. We're going to Google and we are saying uh, Visual Studio, Visual C++ redistributable. And um, we just happen to know from prior, again, oh, ah, I see where I'm going. I'm going to my old forum post to look up which of the redistributables are actually installed by LaRo. And it turns out that it's the 2005, and there's, it, installs the, it installs it twice, and the 2010. Um, so that gives us our targets here. So we can go to Google and uh, type those in. Visual Studio 2005, redistributable. Sure, x86. We went ahead and installed in this video here, as you'll see, we're going to go ahead and install the x86 and the x64 versions because it can't hurt to put both on there. Um, <laughs> one annoying part of this is that uh, they, the, regardless of the year or ver regardless of the year edition you're downloading of these redistributables, uh, it always calls them V. V C R E D I S T V credist, <laughs> uh, and so they just kind of. Uh, you'll see later in this. I sort them by date to to determine which ones I download. Um, right now we're just getting the. And you get this choice here, and it looks like oh well here we get the choice to download the X64 and the X86 version, so I'm going to download them both, which is a bit redundant because we already had the X86 version. We open the folder and we see that we got the x86 twice. That's hence the parenthetical one there on the middle one. But we go ahead and we install them. The first one we downloaded. Then we jump up to the 64-bit one. And that's going to cover the 2005 editions, but we also need the 2010 edition. So if I know me, that's where we're going to go next. Again, I'm recording this voiceover after the fact. Here we go. Visual Studio 2010. And there it is. We seem to have landed on a farther along page there. So we just click the click here to get that to start downloading. And as you can see, it overwrote the prior 2005 edition, or it didn't overwrite it, but it um, appended a parenthetical one. So you'll again see me sort by date later. Just to determine which one we need to run there. And here comes the x86. So we sort by date modified. That's how we know these are the last two we just downloaded, and we run them both. Yes, I agree. 
install done finish run <laughs> and check and install and finish okay so now we can go see what Laro is going to do and we double click it hey that's progress it'll at least get us to this question do we want to download the six gigabyte uh, high resolution textures yes we do we always do that they do look nicer you can always turn them off at a later time if your machine chokes on them all right we say I agree I have a feeling we're about to be sped up here and now <laughs> note that a Kamai appears to install here as well uh, so the Steam edition doesn't even avoid the installation of a Kamai so th there's really no <laughs> there's really no benefit to the Steam installer the only thing you avoid y you introduce a whole lot of n new problems uh, you know uh, show stopping silent crashing to the desktop in at least two different places. We'll see the second one in a little bit. And then, uh, and all you're really saving yourself is one trip to the LotRo website to download the LotRo Live uh, standalone installer. So, the just, you know, one more time why I just prefer. Now, you can see here, it's actually also installing more uh, Visual C++ redistributables. And it's giving us quite a bit more UAC prompts than the standalone installer ever needed to do. But that's okay, because it's, it's apparently filling, backfilling missing stuff. So uh, go ahead and say yes. And more patching should begin. And we're very sped up here, as you can see. We're s flying along at compressed time. That was probably about five minutes. I could look at the clock, I suppose. So we're ready to log in. Yay, right? No. As you'll see here... Uh, we log in, and guess what? Hopefully I log in correctly the first time. Clearly I had a brain hiccup there remembering the password for this account, but here we go. Log in. We can choose our server. Langevall. And play. Come on. Now guess what? Well, we read this in its entirety. And I agree. Speed read. I agree. And guess what happens again? Hmm. We got no lot row. Once again, silently crashing to the desktop for a different reason now. It is not the visual C++ uh, runtimes. It is, say it with me now, the DirectX runtimes, uh, which also fail to install as a prerequisite. So, I mean, I, I just can't stress this enough. After working your way through one silent show-stopping crashing to desktop, you know, at the beginning of the install of the game, where the average user would be stuck, here we are. After it's installed, you're just about ready to log in and start playing, and it again starts silently crashing to the desktop with absolutely no indication of what could be wrong or what you should do. Um, I mean, I, I I want this game to continue to succeed. I would love it if friends and people who were recommend who to whom we recommend this game could have some hope of installing it without trouble, especially on one of the most popular platforms like Steam. I personally don't use it for Laro, but I use it for other games, and if it did install more smoothly, I might consider it. Um, but this is just, as you saw there, demonstrating again, it just, it just crashes um, silently and painfully to the desktop. So um, we'll uh, demonstrate going out, I assume, and getting the DirectX run, ti run times. Uh, yep, we're headed to Google. We say no thanks. And then we type DirectX web installer. For those who've seen my prior video, this is going to look uh, somewhat uh, 
somewhat familiar. Um, in that prior video, I go over how to be more be careful when you're downloading these, making sure you're going to the Microsoft website and things like that. But that's outside of the scope here. Um, we click no thanks there, and we uncheck that Bing checkbox, and we click save. Make sure you uncheck that Bing checkbox. You don't want it. It's going to appear again later here. And we say yes, and we click accept. We're running it now. We uncheck that. Install the Bing Bar checkbox. They're always trying to foist that stuff on us. And we click next, and it's initializing. And it's telling us 90 megabytes here. I believe that's 90. Um, I'm viewing this in a smaller window. And off we go. And with that installed, that the average customer would have no idea they need to go and install that I'm sorry to harp on this but should have been installed by the installer for the game um, we will now be able to launch the game it's, it's again worth pointing out that uh, I guess oddly the lack of the DX runtimes does not cause the game to fail to launch and get you into the game world for the SSG provided standalone LotRo installer. The lack of full DirectX runtimes in the standalone installer just results in you not having DX10 and DX11 eye candy. But on the Steam installer uh, for LotRo, it's somehow f the lack of those DX runtimes somehow causes the game to not launch at all. Uh, or as you can see, silently crash here as soon as you choose your server and just as the launcher is handing off to the actual 3D game client. Um, but, if I can type my password in correctly here. As we will see, once those DX runtimes are installed, we get the prompt we were hoping to get, and we say yes, because we want that eye, ki eye candy. And then uh, here's that pretty standard. It kind of locks you in up there. You, the, you can't move the mouse outside of it. And you have the firewall notification. So I always kind of grab the corner of that firewall notification. You can ignore the firewall notification if you can't reach it. Click Allow. And then the first click in the game window causes it to uh, go into full screen. And you're pretty much off to the races. My prior video about the standalone installer goes through some configuration tips and things like that here and kind of a tour of the client and what where things are stored and etc cetera, etc cetera. but this is more about the steam installer and how <laughs> problematic it is so as you can see we're in the game to sum up the steam installer really uh, on a pristine windows 10 computer that does not that where you have not installed any other games or installed anything that might luckily uh through kind of serendipity have in the you know other games you might have installed might install the dx runtimes might install the visual c plus plus runtimes uh so that you wouldn't notice the 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 problems here in the steam installer if you have installed the game prior and it installs those dx runtimes it installs those visual c plus plus runtimes then the steam installer for lot row might go very smoothly for you but um if you're on a pristine computer uh you know uh, you, you recently got it back from the shop or you're the kind of person who who wipes it uh, and reinstalls it yourself you're going to have a lot more trouble with the steam installer than you will the standalone installer um uh, it's got the two show-stopping silent crashes to desktop, one due to the lack of the Visual C++ runtimes at the initial uh, installation, and then later the second silent show-stopping crash to desktop when you've successfully patched, launched, and even logged into the, ins the, the client, and just as it would launch into the, uh, the 3D portion of the game, uh, actually entering the game world, to select your character, then it silently crashes the desktop because of a lack of DX runtimes. So, okay, uh, I know I already said to sum up, but I guess all I can really say is the <laughs> the standalone installer is much less problematic 
uh, it's just as fast. Both of them saturated my 200 megabit uh, per second uh, cable connection for the initial 20 to 24 gigabyte uh, download of the initial game. Um, but the Steam installer, even though I had been told, uh, <laughs> contrary to my prior experience, that it would avoid some of the tedium uh, that I that I went through in my prior video, it doesn't. Uh, all it all it saves you is one trip to the Lotro website to download the Lotro Live standalone installer, um, <laughs> and then it introduces a ton more problems. Uh, on top of just introducing that middleman of Steam when it's just totally unnecessary. So, anyways, I think, uh, I hope this has been helpful. I hope that SSG takes note of this and considers rewriting their installers or reconfiguring them or polishing them. And uh, thank you for watching.